what do you call that some of the trades if, if you're on a trade and uh, you know you want to check on trade ideas and the patterns as well you know feel free to share with us which um, time frame which instruments you know what sort of pattern you may have spotted or would like to confirm you know on the direction whether it's trends or uh, the psychological levels things like that we can always discuss that you know as long so as long as it you know gives you guys uh, a bit of an edge in terms of understanding uh, a bit more on your current positions especially and also future trade ideas okay so uh, you managed to close your uh, trades yes with profit with profit except for the except for the USD and Mexican peso I guess yeah okay so you were selling on it all right um, I'll, I'll clarify on the USD Mexican peso because I have mentioned that uh, a couple of times on telegram as well that the USD Mexican peso is actually positive for Trump so it, it's correlated positively to Trump so uh, it should actually be giving more room now it's probably making a bit of a correction downwards but giving more room to the upside We'll talk about that as well because they they may seem uh, it, it may seem like a probable uh, bullish uh, flagpole pattern as well. Okay, so if Trump is uh, have one uh, obviously now, um, then that would be positive for the USD Mexican peso in particular. So that's why I uh, would like to focus on uh, the you know each pair would have its own personality. So for USD uh, Mexican peso particularly would be positive uh, as long as it's positive for Trump. I mean uh, for Trump who is now the president would actually be you know positive for the USD Mexican peso. Okay all right we'll go over that no, no worries just give me a couple of minutes I'll be back. Uh, just give me a couple of minutes, okay? I'm uh, putting on the, uh, the 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 screen share for you guys. I uh, will just uh, hit off with the uh, USD index uh, first because this will give us a bit of an idea on the um, weather or uh, sentiments revolving uh, the US dollar. But I'll come back in two minutes, guys. Okay? Just hang on there for two minutes, and I'll be back. Okay? I'm just uh, onto the chat at the moment on WhatsApp and Telegram. Uh, just communicating with. Uh, some of them who are having a little bit of a trouble getting into the uh, go to webinar just give me a second
Alright guys, I think I'm uh, back now, so I think we should actually start. Uh, so, okay, I could see uh, most people are in. Alright, that's very good. Okay, let's just start then, okay? It's uh, 3.13 um, Cyprus time uh, in Limassol. Uh, okay, bright and sunny today. Uh, it's not winter at all here, so I would like to wish you guys uh, a very good uh, afternoon, good evening uh, to you guys. Welcome to today's um, Wednesdays uh, for Life Account uh webinar and today is the 11th sorry no today is the 9th of November 2016 so let's uh, get on with that so uh, yes so you guys uh, have noticed uh, the shake in the market uh, due to this um, this drama um, our new uh, president uh, not our exactly but the global economy's uh, <laughs> president uh, Trump so uh, yes that have definitely uh, rocked a lot of boats um, have actually cost uh, um, you know, good and good and not so good uh, scenarios for traders. Uh, for those who have been, uh, you know, who have expected some some uh, scenario to the upside for gold um, due to dollars fall, then they have actually, uh, you know, gained quite a bit. Uh, that includes me because I have always been a skeptical, a skeptic uh, over. Uh, something that uh, you know has has gone on uh, really well like uh, how the market have actually prided in uh, so much about Hillary so now you know we were talking about complexity theory so I always expect the unexpected uh, so that that was it and uh, from a from the uh, patterns perspective uh, we're looking now at the USD index okay and I like uh, I like to start with the USD index for uh, my um, you know next webinars and and uh, and uh, next uh, tutorials or, or any seminars because uh, I like it to be uh, sort of a uh, you know a uh, a look into the market uh, based on the dollar okay so the dollar against six currencies a basket of six currencies so here I mean uh, I just I'll just um, what do you call that? Uh, show you the I'm um, showing you now the USD index on the daily chart. Okay, so what we we expected at the time. I mean, I I have cleared this with you guys. That's not C. Sorry, I've got C drawn at the wrong place. Give me a second. Uh, we have got A right there. Now this is the lazy Z pattern, and this is the uh, bullish uh, Z-like pattern. So I've started there with an A B. Now this um, particular um, how do you call that uh, pattern was spotted uh, or formed uh, some time ago, and uh, I just waited for it to end uh, there at C area and progress down. Uh, so once it has uh, pierce through that zone that I've just drawn here which has proven to be a significant uh, support area then that uh, signals immediately more uh, what do you call that more uh, chances to the downside for the dollar so once it has actually crossed and pierced through there based on this Z-like pattern I straight away have got my eyes uh, to the downside for the dollar against uh, the six currencies um, the basket of six currencies based on this USD index so hence the reason I see the potential from that time uh, that uh, you know there may be a chance or uh, a chance for Trump to win it because uh, Chan, uh, Trump winning it would, would then crash the dollar, uh, cause dollar to fall and uh, that has been reflected uh, not only by this pattern, by the play of uh, support resistance as well uh, on the technical side uh, and also the build up of fundamental news and all that as we have all been updating each other on Telegram as well as uh, you know each other on different sources like uh, WhatsApp and all that. We've talked a lot about how the poll uh, has actually, uh, you know, uh, increased for Trump, and that uh, it was just a matter of uh, uh, of time to, to to realize whether or not these votes have actually gone up in Florida. So once that has led the way uh, to uh, to us believing or, or knowing that it has actually gone up a lot in Florida, that itself just confirm uh, that that uh, you know confirm that pattern that we have actually seen as well for dollars fall so um, this is a Z-like pattern now I'm expecting it to uh, correct anytime soon uh, because this is the zone that it would correct itself so then if it does go up to it would then bounce up towards uh, back to the to the area where uh, it, it uh, sort of bounce up and come back down because that was a, a sort of a breakout there as you can see now that breakout there caused it to go back to where it has broken out from and then come back here so we've talked a lot about this uh, whereby the 
Z-like pattern here, uh, the C to D is what we will be trading uh, for this. This is a bullish Z-like pattern, so you've got a chance uh, to trade there and probably have got that chance already for those who have actually, um, uh, what do you call that, uh, take uh, profit. So for those who have actually taken profit, you know, I would like to congratulate you guys. Happy pipping for that. That's good. So now you've got a, um, a, a second leg to trade uh, as well. So that is your D uh, to E area okay so they they we are we're looking into a d to e sort of um, area so that d to e for the usd index uh, would then uh, some of you guys uh, or most of you guys including myself were not trading the usd index as an instrument we're using this as a sort of gauge uh, on the us dollar strength okay and by when would it then give us a, a bit of an indication uh, of 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 a buying opportunity or a long opportunity for the dollar is when it has broken up broken out from this range here so we would need to wait for prices uh, to go above the 96 uh, 40 uh, area and above now it's just playing across that area there I guess I know it has actually gone up there sorry at 97 93 so it has gone there and as you can see you know that was a very very nice D2E uh, sort of um, uh, what do you call that uh, trade right there so it came back up and then it went and touched uh, that area there so uh, we're still looking at at this stage what would be best to look at is whether or not they are prolonged move uh, for now for the dollar to go up uh, we need to look at prices uh, from this stage so the prices at this moment the price for USD index is at 97.95 okay so I would think it's probably best for us to wait till either uh, it goes above this zone here so that we can see more strength okay so this would then confirm more strength to the upside for dollar against GBP dollar against euro dollar against uh, the, the others only once it has actually gone above the 98 uh, 58 so 98 point point fifty eight fifty eight is your uh, close to the site number uh, as well by eight pips so uh, fifty is your site number as you guys know so ninety eight point sixty would be a good price for us to then revisit and look at oh uh, whether or not uh, we've got a bit of a, a, a price increase or an appreciation to the upside okay so at this stage it is still a bit too early okay for the D to E uh, type trade and I'm telling you the D to E uh, even though you're not trading USD index just to give you an indication of the pattern as well as the strength uh, for the dollar index okay so uh, we we could actually wait for two things to happen to give us an idea of whether the dollar uh, whether the dollar uh, in comparison to the six currencies have got more room to the upside or is it the right time or not uh, with two things one is the psychological level for now uh, which is here for example we've got the prices trading at nine uh, 99 98 zero so you see nine ninety eight point zero zero the point zero zero is your site number already so we would need prices to go above the zero zero by ten pips and ninety eight point one zero and above okay but once it has gone above it is still in within that zone here you see so it's probably best for us to wait a little to get more confirmation uh, and once it has actually gone above this zone when you look left it has uh, once it has gone above the zone and and uh, gone over this selling area here because this is this was where the sellers has actually dominated in the past so once prices have gone above that zone uh, that's first confirmation second confirmation is when it has actually gone above that resistant area there above C basically and above and then you look at the price psychology as well now if that does happen then we've then we have got more strength to the upside in store for the dollar okay if not then what we will then uh, have if it doesn't go above that zone because for those of you who wants to know okay whether or not I have to start buying the dollar you know of course it's got a bit of correction and things like that let's use the USD index to measure 
your uh, trade decisions uh, for the dollar against six currencies especially okay but you've got uh, you've got the USD against at least four or five major ones anyway okay so this is a good sign for us so look into the USD index look into the pattern to give us a bit of a direction because what we're doing now is not to predict the market but to sort of measure have a bit of a measurement tool so I use the geometric patterns as a measurement uh, tool to know how far more uh, you know could USD go if it does go up it should go above which level and things like that so if I clear this one up for you let's see um, give me a second okay now we've got it here clearly on the daily chart I would like to use a daily chart first I know some of you guys maybe you would like to trade it in short term scalping one hour 15 minutes five minutes and all that but it's best to to look at it first from the daily four hour or one hour you know you need to compare these three first uh, but I like starting off with the daily uh, so that it, because it feeds me with more information more data in the daily chart okay so here uh, if uh, for example, you have got uh, prices already touched there. Yeah, as you can see, it is at 97. Uh, sorry, nine. Yeah, that that 97, 99 area. Okay, or 95 area. Now, uh, if that does actually come downwards, what would happen is uh, if it it progresses downwards, then you may have a potential of an M-like pattern here going down. And again, still, it's telling you that here is an area that it would correct itself and go back up so um, we have got a bit of a uh, a bit of a how do you call that back and forth type trade with the dollar because there's a lot of uncertainty you see because it's just too much uncertainty that has actually been caused by Trump at this moment of time so the market is uncertain there's some fear as well but it's more uncertainty than fear okay so because of the way it works with more uncertainty than fear this gives us a bit of a a bit of a signal or a bit of a hint that this prolonged, um, how do you call that, downness of US dollar may actually happen for from the very sh the shortest term now until medium term. But from medium term onwards, economically, I foresee a better sort of uh, pickup of the US economy from medium to longer term. So we would need to look into, when I talk about medium to longer term, it has to be uh, because of the timing of the year as well. It's end of the year, uh, ending of the year, we've got Christmas coming and things like that. It's better to look into uh, what would happen for the dollar if you are actually up for the dollar and you are a trader who is very pro the dollar and still has got lots of belief of uh, trading to the upside of the dollar then you want to look into the medium term onwards because this is what's expected for a Trump uh, presidency so for a Trump presidency like now it won't show you a lot of uh, positivity uh, for the dollar as of now or the shortest term it would then pick up later on economically and everything else fiscal uh, stimulus and everything else from medium term then that would then mean from January onwards okay once uh, the dust has actually settled Christmas settled down the new year and things like that so from January onwards once it starts and if it does pick up for the dollar rise and all that then it would have much more because I would like to talk to you later on I mean once we've actually covered a few more pairs to talk to you about uh, what to expect with a Trump's uh, presidency uh, based on I mean with the economy and the political uh, aspects of things uh, what are the areas that Trump would focus on and uh, with that uh, will it then impact the markets or the assets that you are trading especially currencies okay because each president has got its own his or her own focus okay? Okay, and uh, the, the focus would either be either free trade, whether it's climate change, immigration, you know, the growth uh, to a certain extent on, on how that model will hit. And all that would then impact the emerging markets like um, uh, Malaysia, Southeast Asia, Singapore, everywhere else. Okay, because the emerging markets like even Brazil, the BRICS country and all that does actually suffer or go up with the value of the dollar. 
okay so when the dollars uh, the dollars value now is to the downside and how long more would it be to the downside would then impact or mirror that to the performance uh, of currencies uh, from the emerging markets okay especially the BRICS countries you got the Brazil you know um, uh, Brazil India China and all that so got the BRICS Russia uh, all these BRICS countries so the these countries rely a lot and they mirror on the movement of the dollar dollar on the upside emerging market to the upside dollar on the downside emerging market to the downside okay so uh, this is where it would have a bit of an impact there as well so we want to uh, look at that and that does go for Malaysia Singapore Indonesia and all that you know it's quite pro uh, not pro is a bit of a dependency on the dollar uh, as well so now um, it would suffer a little bit okay on our local currencies in Southeast Asia would suffer with the economy as well due to what's going on in the States okay because Trump won uh, dollar falls uh, so the concentration will be more on safe heavens okay precious metals safe heavens uh, like the yen and CHF and all that kind of thing okay so this is uh, basically what's going on so with with the USD index itself on the daily chart we've got a bit of an idea what may actually go on with the dollar okay so I'm uh, we need to monitor these two zones I'll keep these two zones I mean this has been on my chart for um, almost two months now and uh, it has been playing along the pattern really well okay so here um, despite the pattern that I've drawn correctly on the Z-like pattern here or oh, high probable uh, type Z-like pattern um, apart from that pattern we've also got I think we've mentioned that last week a W-like pattern so that W-like pattern has ended and been a success uh, as much a success as the Z-like pattern so sometimes with geometric pattern um, I'll be able to confirm one pattern to the other pattern with the other pattern in order to confirm the trend direction so that's why I like um, trading uh, geometric patterns as well with the with with confirmation via Fibonacci tools of course the retracements and the extensions okay uh, so that we can look back and see whether or not uh, you know which pattern have actually failed uh, the, the trader or you know are there adjustments to be made and then we reconfirm that with the Fibonacci ratios okay so here for example let me just erase the drawing here uh, just so that you guys are clear with uh, what I'm talking about the W and the Z and all that uh, here from this end here okay if you pull that one down okay and then uh, of course we've got the normal ABCD here correct so that ABCD combined with a big move down is the Z pattern so that Z pattern once it completes coincidentally completes uh, there at that zone there the same as the high for the Z like pattern that would signal downward move which already have ha had happened so uh, I would be trading for the Z pattern still I will trade with a C to D let's say right but the C is here um, okay C to D now uh, this is based on the W pattern so that W pattern uh, C to D uh, I would trade that to the upside and then D to E as it falls okay here so that that itself uh, would um, would then confirm that Z like pattern in yellow too okay the one that I've drawn initially so uh, it's a good sign it, it increased the probability uh, for me to trade uh, the the dollar uh, following the direction that I've showed you um, the C to D to the upside and the D to E to the downside mainly because as I've drawn earlier on you've got a W like pattern and then that co coincide or matches very nicely with this big Z pattern here as well okay uh, but with this Z pattern here and that W pattern we've also got a smaller pattern that again further confirm the uh, movement of uh, the dollar so that was another Z pattern here but starting from here that is another Z pattern there okay so that again confirm that move to the downside so the downside move of uh, C to D for example uh, was quite high in probability and quite low in the risk so I have taken that decision to uh, to what do you call that um, uh, to short the dollar uh, based on the other currencies as well because I see that that 
potential of a downside uh, area so sorry the downside move for the dollar based on the USD index hence I was really skeptical uh, with the uh, with the rise of the dollar or even the winning of Hillary I was I was doubting that a lot based on just this pattern here uh, and of course I was reading uh, you know hour by hour uh, since last night on uh, on the progress with Trump and all that but then that merit very nicely with the chart and the geometric patterns as well with what was going on with Trump and Trump's winning streak and things like that okay so uh, this is what I would like to tell you is that you know we uh, even though we've got high probability patterns sometimes is best for us to always marry it with what's going on in the news so that we we've got a marry up of technical or charting with fundamental news okay and these two has to always match up I mean if it does match up then you're looking into more um, uh, reduction of your risk level and more increment of your probability so you see with this USD index itself just giving me clues uh, of the direction that the dollar would take uh, it has been confirmed by at least three patterns the big W pattern the big Z pattern and now a smaller uh, Z like pattern but then this Z like pattern again for me would marry up or would combine with a potential M like pattern so again you know I would see that to confirm uh, a potential upward move for the dollar from now on as a corrective move but if it does make that move correctively upwards it's a short to medium term before it goes down further okay so this is for the USD uh, index but the USD position compared to six main currencies in the basket of six currencies okay let's go to the other ones now okay let's because we are on the dollar dollar always you know uh, from looking at the dollar is best then for us to look into the reflection onto gold because gold's movement gold as I've mentioned many times uh, previously does not go up or down but it does have got connection with what's going on in the states and the status or the strength of the dollar so we've seen the dollar strength okay and if you guys have got no questions on the USD index here we can always go on specifically to other pairs but very quickly let us just go on to gold's uh, position because uh, we do have quite a number of traders uh, wondering about gold's position and I uh, want to I, I still have left uh, most of the uh, what you call that uh, most of the patterns that was drawn previously in most of the webinars uh, since uh, a month a month and a half ago and things like that and they're all still intact at the moment I've not seen uh, very many uh, failed patterns so far I've only seen uh, you know out, out of uh, uh, let's say 10 patterns uh, or 12 patterns so far uh, concerning correlated pairs and all that uh, I may have only spotted one uh, one uh, pair uh, that has got a bit of a uh, you know failed pattern but it's not failed a hundred percent was just a bit of a corrective that pattern has actually adjusted a, a, a bit better to a better level in terms of Fibonacci ratio so I wouldn't say that that has actually failed so here for example with the uh, XAU or gold on the daily chart you could see that I've left that pattern uh, just as it was and uh, this was the predictive move here okay because that Z pattern here from here A to B okay let me just uh, explain a little bit more uh, that was the Z pattern that was you know uh, that to me formed some time ago a month and a half to two months ago and I've seen that Z like pattern giving me that opportunity from C to D so I have taken that C to D uh, and you know limited that with a, a limited losses as well because I, I was expecting it to come down to this part but it didn't uh, but still it was uh, not a loss per se so that was uh, still a very good trade uh, and that Z like pattern uh, usually once it completes to the D area around here or even the zone that I've drawn then it would give a rise up so that rise up will go up to that blue area and it already did uh, do that uh, rise up to that to that area so as you can see that uh, that uh, rate like drawing uh, or that arrow um, it's still progressing and uh, it has progressed very nicely it has actually gone up to that zone so that zone for me would mark uh, a bit of a downward trend 
okay for gold so you see if 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 now you've got a bit of a corrective move downward trend then it would converge or match with what we have just seen on the USD index daily chart so the story does actually match whatever that you see in terms of pattern um, on the USD index daily that indicates the strength of the dollar is looking like there's a bit of an appreciative or corrective move to the upside and then when we move into the goal now same thing on the daily chart uh, not the same thing but uh, on the contrary uh, it has got a downward move so that does actually uh, match the negative correlation between the US dollar and the um, uh, the gold okay so here I'll still follow through and not actually that hence the reason I've not taken out any drawings and anything else because I would like to show you guys whether it has actually succeeded in terms of its movement based on the pattern or have actually failed at this stage nothing has actually failed between the USD index and the gold chart so uh, here if it does actually make that move and correct downwards then you've got that M pattern at play so this is uh, what I mean by that uh, here for example let's wait till you've got further uh, downside uh, for goal if it does what will happen that downside will follow this this leg here okay uh, because this is what's going on now following the red arrow that's what's happening now now if it does actually start to to come down or start falling uh, prices of coal start falling under one three two three and below that would follow this leg this leg down okay if it does follow this leg down then it would then complete or or start completing this m like pattern okay this m like pattern right now m like pattern uh, so the if if you once you have noticed it falling from the from this area downwards then you are looking into your c uh, to d of the m pattern because m pattern uh, your a would be here okay your B would be here right and then this is X okay I know I've got B here but that B is for the Z like pattern now we are looking at a new uh, potential or probable uh, pattern formation called the M like pattern so we are awaiting for that fall from C to D if it does fall then we are looking into a correction area for gold to again go up once it's reached this area here at 1225 1230 area you know to go upwards because your 1220 is your psychological level uh, above that uh, uh, by ten dollars is your thirty one to thirty area so one to thirty is an area to look at uh, for goal to rebound back up again okay one two three zero area or one two two zero area okay so between one two three zero and one uh, two oops, two zero okay this these are area that we would still have to wait for prices for gold to come down and touch either this or this before it start to go up again okay so this is following the M like pattern so it does actually match very nicely with what's going on with the dollar and this is what's expected of the dollar as well to make a bit of a correction down and then you know uh, sorry to, to make a bit of a correction up and then down even more so more expectation for uh, dollar to rise up uh, sorry to, to go down and more expectation for do for gold to rise up but at this moment of time it's got a bit of a corrective move so gold is on its way down a little bit uh, gold is on uh, um, dollar is on the way up a little bit so there's a bit of a correction but overall dollar has got more room to the downside gold has got more room to the upside okay so this is your M pattern uh, for the U for the goal on the daily chart all right let's look into what's going on with the USD JPY um, and then we'll go through the USD Mexican peso as well okay um, as mentioned earlier on so let me just erase all the drawings here and let's move on to the USD JPY now the USD JPY you know I've talked to you guys a lot about uh, pole and flag pattern now here when you see uh, candles give you know longish candles like this and even though you've got a few of those and they're significantly long that itself can be summed up as the pole okay pole of a uh, flag and pole pattern so if I've got this whole area here as a potential pole okay all the way down then whatever correction corrective move I have I can actually draw sort of a pet uh, uh, 
pattern a flag pattern okay so uh, once it has actually gone up and down up and down within that pattern that would then give more room to the downside once it has broken out from that flag pole pattern so whatever goes on here like this like this like this will then have got more probability to to break out downwards because this is a bearish uh, pole and flag pattern that's your pole right here okay this area uh, the channel area up is your flag okay that's your flag area okay and this is your pole area right so pole and flag pattern and this is a bearish uh, flag uh, pole and flag pattern and that that could only give us more hint to the downside and how far down it's from the highest point the highest point of price in within that uh, that uh, flag uh, and you just measure it from the length of this pole itself okay so that length of pole uh, you can take it and uh, and and take it from from the highest price of the flag and then you can measure that down all the way to see how much more can dollar fall against the yen okay so here gives us a lot of because um, we I mean with the fundamentals as well you know it has been priced in a lot uh, to uh, you know to to hint most traders investors of how Trump would only uh, bring down the dollar much more but um, in my opinion yes it would and it, it it has and it will bring down much more the dollars price but uh, from short to medium term not forever okay because things will then need to pick up with a new presidency uh, thing so there's a lot of games maybe a bit of manipulations and some other things that would then uh, start to show the world how good Trump uh, is as a president and that usually is the case no matter who gets elected this is usually the flow and the whole process would actually work out that way okay so that it gives hope because uh, the big boys and the politicians and the new president now um, they need to pick things up fairly quickly but mostly uh, from the area of sentiments making people and the general public believe that the president is definitely the right one to be president and will take the country up sky high and this is what the politicians have to start uh, not implementing but uh, you know start to to have that sip into the belief system of its general public because the politician knows that this is what you have to do starting from now because only then everything else for, for him would work wonders once you've got the people believing in him okay so this is uh, what I feel uh, so uh, we're looking at the USCJP one the one hour chart okay so this is your um, pull and flag pattern there if I um, erase all that drawings and we're looking into uh, the bigger perspective the daily chart as you can see we have got a very nice Z like pattern that formed and completed uh, uh, at D point and gave us another opportunity from D to E as well to the upside as you can see that is a fairly nice Z like pattern uh, and uh, we were trading from C to D to the downside for USD versus the, the dollar uh, sorry the yen and then once it uh, you know you, you see how uh, nicely it has actually corrected from the zone that was drawn some time ago a couple of weeks back and uh, we were just waiting for that C to D to come and reach that uh, Z area and then it definitely did bounce back up because it's a bullish Z like pattern so it ended at D and bounce uh, upwards from D to E and I took that trade from D to E as well as the C to D previously so that was uh, a very nice one uh, there so for those who are trading uh, patterns or are familiar with double top and all that uh, I'm not a trader on just chart patterns uh, but I sometimes just you know look into the possibility or the probability of uh, of what the majority people are trading and they usually trade chart patterns and they talk a lot about double top triple top or double top triple bottom or wages or you know all kind of uh, patterns that are classified under just chart patterns so chart patterns are quite different uh, from harmonic patterns and geometric type patterns that I trade so but I, I like looking at it you know just to 
to give a bit of a hint more confirmation the better okay so here for example I have seen uh, I'm looking at it right now and uh, you know we've got a C and a D it's quite similar here all right now here this is for USDJPY on a daily chart now it has gone downwards corrected itself uh, here itself you could see this as a form of a rejection candle meaning that this bearish candle has has rejected uh, more possibility to the downside that means it may have been overtaken by bias here okay because that's why it tried to go down but the body didn't feel the skeleton the the flesh didn't actually feel in uh, the skeleton okay so you've got that skeleton part here not filled by the by the bearish body so what that means is that it tried to go down it couldn't so then it left you with the bones okay so that does give us a bit of a hint that is a some form of buying opportunity so again here it is again coinciding with what's going on with what we've seen in the dollar index as well as gold meaning that there's some form of hint some sort of hint for a bit of correction of the dollar for now now meaning shortest term before we go down again okay so the, this is what may may be happening right now okay so um, but here I would like to just point out if I zoom in that for you okay um, let's look at that long move here right that that whole move upwards oops sorry you've got that big move upwards there all right and then downwards and then up and then down so I am a uh, patterns trader more uh, between harmonic and geometric I use a lot of Fibonacci so I don't see this I, I would see the the confirmation via double top let's say but here what I'm looking at as a uh, geometric trader is a possibility of an M like pattern because we've got all the way up here okay it is a double top for a lot of you guys so down here and then up again and then down but I see an M like pattern so I do see a potential A here okay right uh, B down here okay C and more room to the downside of course this one here has gone down already though okay so I would like you guys to measure uh, that means the C to D has actually happened that's the D that week there with that uh, candle could potentially be the D we would need to wait for the next candle to appear to look at whether or not um, a B equals CD by any chance if it does then it gives you the zone and then you've got chances for upward move so that upward move may be just a correction but again it coincides very nicely that just to summarize it is time for dollar to make a bit of a corrective move upwards okay and it's time for gold to make a bit of a corrective move downwards all right so don't be too surprised with gold uh, for those who are buying gold at the moment uh, to ask why you know I you know it's it's not doing that uh, big upward move you know for 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 gold to rise up more it needs to to have correction okay to the downside for it to make the steps to go up and it's the same uh, for the for the dollar the dollar needs to make corrective upward move before it it goes further down again okay so here to give you a bit of an idea USD JPY I know quite a number of traders are trading or are fan of the USD versus the yen uh, so I would like to cover that in a second let's just erase that drawing here so here let's now regard this as a B and then C and then D okay so if that if that A to B stop there let's say I'll take that here so that gave me that that gives me another area here a b equals c d right there okay so i will put this back here uh, maintain that as the z like pattern the c to d of the z like pattern previously uh, but here uh, these are the possibility now of course it went it went beyond that all right so for the m like pattern usually let us just uh, let's let's look at it as an M like pattern so if it is an M like pattern what I usually do is I, I pull Fibonacci from X to A okay so that's my X that's my A okay for the M like pattern okay and I look for the uh, 61.8 as well as the 78.6 I've got 78.6 right there as you can see it stopped the wick of that candle stop at 
61.6 okay the um, the 61.8 is right there okay now I will pull that X to C so this is my C right there right it's the same thing basically uh, not much difference from from that because it's sort of like a double top thing now why I've done that is because this then gives me an area of where prices can start going up from. That's why I did the Fibonacci from X to A for the M-like pattern. So this gives me a hint that anytime now prices will start bouncing upwards for the USD yen. Okay, and this uh, has been proven or given the hint by this candle here. This candle here, the, the, the body didn't complete it and it's got a longer wick to the downside. When you've got a longer wick to the downside compared to the body the, uh, of a bearish candle, that means that it's rejecting the downside, further downside possibility. And because the, you've got a bias taking control or battling with the sellers and uh, taking, taking sellers out a little bit so not too much to the downside but again this is a daily chart that's a daily candle there so we've got to wait a little bit more but uh, I would then think that if this is this uh, were to be a successful M like pattern then I would look into uh, prices uh, for the next candle uh, onwards there just after this candle now I think the next candle uh, may give us a bit of a rise upwards as a corrective move okay so then um, this is basically the D area of the of the M like pattern so the M like pattern is now looking to me like this okay there you go so that's the M like pattern so that's my C that's my D okay uh, perhaps the next candle uh, next one if it is potentially a buying or a bullish type candle, then you're looking at your potential D to E trade. Okay, so once it does and it ends at somewhere at E, okay, that would be either the uh, the, the 50 61.8 uh, or 50% Fibonacci of C to D. Then that is where it might end. Then you would see that creating another pattern. Once it ends at E, then you're looking into downside sort of move. Okay, then you've got uh, that being your A, that being your B, and then your C downwards. Okay, so again, we wait till prices go up to E, and then if you want to short the USD versus the yen again, you can look at more room to the downside. But again, this is based on patterns, uh, principles of patterns. So we can only uh, look into it happening, uh, base that on the Fibonacci ratios and extensions, as well as the patterns, geometric pattern, A, B, C, D, and always look to the right and look at level psychological numbers as well okay like now we've got prices uh, trading with the USD JPY on 103.85 so 0.85 really really close to the 80 psych number so if you want to look at prices um, potential to go down more it has to go under 70 at least 103.70 at least then it gives you more hints to the downside for at this stage it's not giving me that idea that it is going to go down much much more based on the principles of psychological numbers itself and the pattern that we see on the M like pattern so the M like pattern giving us hint to the upside correctively because it ended at D point okay all right that's the USD JPY let's just quickly go on to the USD Mexican peso but I'll clear off the drawings here um, Okay, and let's go to the USD Mexican Peso. All right, uh, here Niti, I think you've asked about the USD Mexican Peso. I mean, I just would like to clarify the USD Mexican Peso. We have talked a lot about the USD Mexican Peso and it is correlated to the success of Trump. So Trump have, has succeeded, it correlated they correlate positively. So Trump succeeds, Trump becomes president, USD Mexican Peso has got more room to the upside. Okay, so this does not mean that the USD Mexican Peso to the upside, every other pair with the USD will be on upside. No, it doesn't work that way. This is how the currency market works is with personality types, meaning that each one pair has its own mechanics and personality and character. Okay, it is tied up with some geopolitical or even fundamental side of things so it is not the same it wouldn't mirror all the movements of all USD related pair 
the same way, same direction. So here, uh, looking at the USD Mexican Peso, as we have seen, now we go on to the USD index, correct? And then we went to the gold, uh, went to the gold, and then we went to the USD daily. So we have concluded, uh, based on the daily chart itself, more room, uh, more corrective move of the dollar to the upside. So here, this is what we are looking at right now. USD Mexican Peso is showing signs of a recovery to the upside, okay? And that is USD Mexican Peso. Now, it has actually gone downwards. Now, here, it's a very nice, it looks to me like a very nice or probable uh, pole and flag pattern, a bullish pole and flag pattern that is drawn from here all the way up here, that's your pole, and then it corrected itself in the form of a channel right there, and hence it has broken up now past that channel to the upside. So we are looking at more potential to the upside for the USD Mexican Peso one hour chart. And that upward move potentially could be from here to the, uh, to the top, uh, the same height as here and here. Okay, so you take that move uh, like this. Give me a second. You take that move here, the pole. You can start with the body of that and then the body right there, okay? Double click that, start from the bottom. Okay, it's like, it's, uh, it's as though you're trading the ABCD. So you take that, starting from the bottom of that flag. So we see a potential, okay? Potential here. Potential rise of the dollar. Uh, versus the Mexican peso on the one hour chart to 22.21 area. It's quite close to 22.20 sec, sec number. So you are at 20 right now for USD versus Mexican peso. So if you do want to exit uh, based on the principles of psychological numbers, you want to always exit before 2220 below by 10 pips, at least 2210 so that you don't get caught up, uh, caught out uh, in the market too easily. Okay, now I think I've got some questions here. Let's see. Now we, uh, Niti, okay, CADJPY, it looks like your favorite Veronica here on the CADJPY, no problems at all. It's okay, welcome. It's okay, you're not, uh, you're never late for the webinar, don't worry, you know, uh, you've got, we've got it uh, recorded as well, so uh, you, you're you always going to catch the, uh, everything that I've said in the webinar via the recordings, okay, so don't worry. For for um, live account holders, I mean, you, you guys have got access as soon as you ask uh, for it, uh, you know, via, you can ask uh, through your account managers, I think for uh, African clients, uh, it's Sozo's your account manager, and uh, for those in uh, Malaysia, let's say, or Asia, it's uh, it would be Arif, who is based in Malaysia, in Kuala Lumpur, so if not, email me simply at Kenny at Orbex.com, we can get that sorted. But your account managers would be your first step to, you know, just send them an indication that you would like the recording and you're already a live client uh, with Orbex and you can easily ask for that, request for that, and it will be sent to you via email, the link to the recording itself, okay? All right, so CDJPY, definitely, Veronica, we'll, we'll take a look at that. So hope this is clear for you guys for the USD Mexican Peso on the one hour chart. So flag and pull pattern, bullish uh, flag and pull pattern. <coughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, let me just erase the drawings right here. Uh, we've got that level there, as I've uh, indicated there. So let's just delete that. Okay. All right. Now it's the same. If we go on to the daily chart, uh, it's just got, you know, if, if you find that the daily chart or the longer time frame has got longer, strong, stronger uh, candle, uh, the look of it is, is, you know, stronger and you've got bigger candles and all that from compared to the shorter time frame, then you've got a better indication that that trend would actually pick up quite well. Okay, so here's an indication that there are definitely some strength now building up for the dollar versus the Mexican peso. Okay, all right. Okay, no problem, Niti. All right, so that's basically it on the USD Mexican peso. I hope that's clear as well for you, Niti, and the rest of you guys on this on the USD Mexican peso. Okay, and uh, now we could always go uh, to uh, CADJPY. Let's go into the CADJPY very quickly. Okay, so there you go, and let's just 
Okay, it's the same here uh, as well, Veronica, on the CADJPY. I mean, I'm looking at the four-hour chart, of course. Uh, you can always go on to the hourly chart. I mean, it's the same uh, meaning uh, there may be a possibility of a uh, um, bearish flag and pole pattern. Okay, so CAD may look like it, uh, it would then give you more chances to the downside. Uh, it has corrected very nicely at exactly at the three exponential moving average. So if you want to treat this as an ABCD pattern, you can as well. If you want to treat this as a flagpole pattern, you can as well. Okay, so it's quite similar actually. It's just that, uh, you know, you may have uh, the flag part, you know, elongated, uh, you know, longer. But let's say we uh, want to stick with the basics here. So if, if it is at all, ABCD pattern then you've got it right there okay just double click you guys know this already very well Ch uh, check it from there so we have got a bit of a uh, not a bit we've got quite a potential for a further drop okay of the CAD now CAD I mean some of you guys have asked me today about why CAD and AUD basically they are actually um, they are pro Hillary okay they have been pro Hillary so you see they've got personalities of various pairs so AUD and ZD CAD these, these are commodity currencies uh, their governance and the government the country itself is quite pro Hillary there may be uh, business reasons trade uh, trade uh, reasons and everything else so um, that didn't work for them so hence they dropped okay so uh, we are looking at more potential uh, to the downside for the CAD as well as the AUD now here it confirms based on the ABCD has got some more potential so you simply do the ABCD I know you guys can do that very well already on the ABCD uh, pattern here um, and uh, use your Fibonacci ratio as well to know where the C has actually landed here in this case C landed at the 61.8 on the dot which is a very very nice ratio for the CAD JPY so we continue by doing that B to C leg right there okay AB equals CD gives you that projection down there um, the potential of CAD to drop further to the 73 area okay so then we convert this uh, simple ABCD type pattern into a, a geometric type pattern so we do just that and we find a cross to give us a probable uh, or potential entry area this is based on the principles of geometric trading uh, this is what I call a centroid so ideally for you guys um, you know those conservative traders or traders who would like to know ideal areas uh, it would be under the 79 uh, sorry 76.29 area so 0.29 is your um, close to your 20 site number so I would then uh, me personally if I were to uh, look into this space on the centroid um, and psychological numbers I would look into a probable entry um, below the 76.20 area so 76.10 ideally but 76.20 is an area to watch out for and if you uh, go into the four hour chart right there you look at the centroid area and you could see uh, let's just go back and you can see that you've got some support right there you've also got some more support here resistant right there and as we go further we may be able to find much much more uh, area that was challenged okay so uh, 76.29 has been a very significant support area too because it went down price went down significantly here and then it got stuck there and then pushed up so it is a, quite a significant support area as well at that 7629 area um, reflecting very nice nicely with that um, centroid area so what does that mean here we would need the buys to go past pierce through and not bounce that area there because it has been a very strong support area so once it has gone it has pierced through then that would show that that uh, support has now become resistance and that the sellers have taken over previous buyers position okay so hence the reason it is highly essential in a way to to trade uh, based on the centroid area to
to give you an ideal uh, entry uh, and then tweak that with the psychological numbers okay as simple as that okay so you guys have got that uh, knowledge already so you know how to draw that and make and keep that simple and always uh, of course to sum that up with the fundamental side of it for the CAD as well as the JPY that means uh, Canada's economic conditions what's going on there have you got more pull to the downside and then does that uh, also coincide with more push to the upside by positiveness or whatever that is compared to to the uh, uh, yen compared to the CAD okay so hope that is clear for you Veronica on the CAD JPY you've got lots of opportunities I guess from here from four hour chart itself looking into more uh, downward pressure okay but please do look into the fundamental aspect, look into the zero hedge stocking forex for example, uh, look into the um, other source of fundamentals to just give us that more room to the downside from the fundamental and new side of things or even data. Okay, all right, more questions. A brilliant Veronica, thank you for that. Okay, so um, I've got that covered. Now uh, for those who trade uh, trades or, or a fan of the euro USD of course you know here uh, we are looking into the euro uh, USD on the on the one hour chart uh, we've got prices now correctively there now the USD index again uh, it is mirroring what's going on here okay because we have got uh, strength of the USD now initially before the election uh, you've got patterns giving you more hints to the upside of the dollar the dollar versus six other currencies but now that election has ended Trump has won uh, we are looking into like we have just seen earlier on uh, a bit of a corrective move to the upside for the dollar we are predicting or forecasting more room to the downside for the dollar based on the patterns based on the principles of uh, how things are analyzed uh, following charts and things like that with the psychological numbers but we're looking at corrective move for the US dollar uh, and further downside pressure for the USD dollar from now to medium term okay so that would then reflect what's going on with the euro versus the USD so we are looking at it to the downside for the euro as you can see it is trading at 1.0998 uh, so um, if you want to know or would like to uh, have a better comfort in knowing whether it's going down much more you would need to wait for prices to go under 1.0980 so only if it does go under 1.0980 and then below and reaches 1.0970 and then go below then you have got more bias to the upside by then something would have happened there may be more news that have encouraged the dollar to go up some manipulation may have happened we don't know that yet but from price action it is still not under the 1.0980 not giving you more room to believe that it would just fall much more not just yet let us just wait we've also got uh, the four hour chart in the daily to check through so uh, as you can see different picture altogether in the uh, four hour chart okay so four hour chart right there let's just okay uh, we've got a bit of an A B C D going on right at the very top there and then it fell all the way downwards here okay so um, different picture here a bit of selling pressure under the three lines as well in the four hour chart on the daily chart we have got again uh, a bit of a rejection type candle working on here but again we need to wait for the next candle to appear okay uh, that means it tried to go up it couldn't it left the skeleton there so again this might then give us a bit more hint that there may be a strength we don't know how much but significantly a bit more stronger dollar is expected even though it's a corrective type move but it may actually be a little bit upside it may be some something that would actually push and make the dollar stronger from now to medium term we don't know how far but there may be a possibility looking at this chart as well euro is looking like they've got more bias to the downside that big rejection candle there is just saying no room to the upside for now for the euro uh, is just too much strength to the downside for the euro so that does give us a bit of a hint some more strength to dollar okay all right so that does actually show that there may be more downward pressure as well for the gold 
Okay, all right. Now, what's happening to the GBP? GBP is the same, but we have got a bit of uncertainty for GBP. Just looking at the one-hour chart itself, uh, the um, uh, candles or prices are trading in between the three exponential moving averages. Okay, so that is just giving us a bit of a support support area as well because it has actually found support as you can see the last candles a bullish candle found support right on the 200 exponential moving average okay so that is giving some corrective move I would guess but this is GBP against the USD all right so this uh, uh, but here it's just uncertain if we go into the five minutes chart let's look at what's going on here a very you know uh, strong to the downside type move here the angle as well as the you know uh, prices under the three moving average but if we go on to the four hour chart let's look at what's going on uh, we're looking at again more uncertainty for our chart one hour short uncertainty as well because we've got the prices still in within the three lines uh, daily chart uh, daily weekly and monthly longer longer term still gives us more opportunity to the downside so what that means is that from now to me to the long term we do see corrective move to the potentially upside but then overall it is still down for the GBP USD okay uh, AUD JPY uh, I pulled out the AUD JPY because we've just got more um, uh, what you call potential from banks as well and they're giving us more potential uh, now onwards to the downside because here I mean looking at this very uh, significant pole potential pole like movement with a upward flag like pattern so we've got a pole flag pattern to the downside this is a bearish uh, pole flag pattern so again it corrected very nicely there if we pull Fibonacci we could treat this as an ABCD as well so if we pull this one right down A to B we see that the C very nicely not only touch the three lines are corrected from there but it's at the uh, Fibonacci retracement of 61.8 that means your C points at 61.8 so that would then give you a nice um, potential uh, ABCD like pattern so you turn that into a geometric pattern look into the centroid for ideal entry further to the downside for the AUD JPY okay so I guess that's basically it I mean uh, we are looking into uh, quite a number of pairs uh, already I mean given you the the whole dollar perspective compared to the six currency pair a little bit on, on, on gold that itself both USD index and gold give you a bit of an idea of what to come uh, for the pairs and uh, also we've gone into other pairs as well and uh, that did include the USD Mexican peso too okay so uh, further upside for the USD Mexican peso and uh, the thing is um, I would like to before uh, closing this session uh, today I would like to just give you uh, as promised a bit of a, a snippet of what to expect from a Trump's uh, presidency okay I mean I want to uh, give a share with you uh, what I think or my opinion uh, with what would Trump focus on I mean or, or what what is Trump good for uh, for the US economy and globally as well so um, I feel that I mean from research as well I feel that uh, Trump has got a lot of uh, focus on free trade I mean he's a pro free trade meaning that he he goes into um, how do you call that uh, negotiations with the global world okay and he like to look into benefiting the US through free trade so um, he will be signing up a lot on uh, on, on signing more deals uh, bilateral trade agreements and all that so I would think this would then uh, boost uh, import exports okay more exports and imports mainly for exports first and then secondly imports but uh, just so that the uh, trade deficit gets more positive okay uh, so he is uh, he'll he'll probably use a free trade agreement and all that I mean with China Australia all you know all these uh, main um, trade uh, partners to look into how to boost the uh, global growth so this is one secondly um, he's got the tendency or um, uh, how do you call the history of uh, not liking Yellen not liking central bankers so he might be the one president who would limit uh, 
Federal Reserve's intervention. Okay, he he uh, if he could just wipe out Federal Reserve, I think he would like that. So, um, uh, in terms of communication relationship between the president and the um, and and the Federal Reserve and Yellen, I think would would start or begin to be uh, begin. Uh, a uh, love hate type relationship okay this is for for uh, the Federal Reserve side of it or the Central Bank of the United States and then um, there is one thing about I think I mentioned very briefly we've got climate change um, Trump is a believer uh, that climate change is not by uh, by human you know he's, he's just got a bit of a problem with the climate change scenario he's got a very different view so we've got something called the Paris climate agreement so he would be perhaps blowing out that Paris Climate Agreement or challenging it and things like that. So um, issue of climate change and all that may raise some conflict with the Trump's uh, presidency. Okay, so this is on the climate change uh, subject. Um, the one very big area uh, that has got some connection with USD Mexican peso, mainly Mex Mexico, um, they don't like him. Okay, the Mexicans have uh, got a problem with that. Uh, and hence the reason we've got more fall of the Mexican peso, the more positive Trump's uh, vote uh, were at that time. Okay, so and it will still continue that way, where it will not benefit uh, Mexican peso so much. Um, but uh, in terms of immigration, okay, it's got some uh, some things to do with. Uh, with uh, Mexico as well, because you've got uh, a high number of immigrants from Mexico in the states, but. Uh, Trump is uh, is is a president. I think w uh, who would limit uh, immigrational activities. Okay, so um, but the effect of it would be moderate, not very high. Wouldn't shake the market so much and things like that for the immigrational side of it. It's more it's more a bilateral internal type thing. Uh, but he is not too big into immigration and uh, you know making it very easy uh, for uh, cross borders and things like that from an immigrational point of view okay uh, so apart from that uh, we've got something else uh, I mean um, we may see a rise in populist movement elsewhere uh, this means you know people like Trump and then uh, people who believe that they can win the presidencies and uh, more into the business community as well uh, very much uh, having uh, the power and control to some extent to the economy and business of the country would then rise up and mirror um, the way um, Trump have actually won uh, his strategy, his uh, mode of operandi and everything else. So we might see a movement uh, increase in populists like uh, Trump, okay, in other countries, okay, we might find mirrors of him there. Okay, um, this is it. And uh, apart from that, of course, um, we are looking into uh, tax, tax cuts. I mean, uh, tax cuts is uh, Trump's uh, Trump card in winning this presidential election. This is what he has um, sort of won the hearts of most people who have worked very hard in the states talking about tax cuts. So he would feed the countries, most probably feed the country's stimulus uh, via tax cuts. Okay, um, It is uh, uncertain uh, going into fear fearful type sentiments uh, for, uh, for Trump in general, but I would think in my opinion uh, from now to medium, but in the longer term, once uh, you've got the trade uh, deficits improved, uh, imports uh, reduced, more exports money in with more growth, uh, more investment uh, back again, gaining more trust in the whole engine of economy in the states. Uh, of course, the emerging markets would suffer a bit from you know now itself uh, a bit, but then they would pick up as well uh, as much as the United States economy would pick up too but that is from the medium to long term this is what I personally believe okay so this is basically it. just a snippet of what goes on I mean with the new president uh, on the global markets um, but we want to trade in stages of course we want to look into opportunities based on what moves the market the most where investors are pumping in their money mostly um, be sure of the trend and most importantly uh, trade in stages carefully uh, and always uh, you know strive to look into lowering your risk and increasing your um, probability okay so these two need to marry up so that could actually marry up much better um, in increasing your odds increasing your probability by combining methods of um, 
fundamentals and technicals okay and then you look for patterns and then you come back to us at Orbex and we discuss it and we look into how we could be of help and uh, you take that trade as and when you feel most comfortable at. but it would be best to go through the checklist of trading trade your plan okay uh, once you plant your trade of course so this is it uh, from me uh, today uh, any questions at all before I uh, wrap up this webinar guys any questions at all sorry about that just a <laughs> drink of water while waiting for your questions no questions at all guys you guys are quite happy riding the uh, whole turbulence of uh, what has happened <laughs> questions guys no questions yes I've got one coming through that's good um, Veronica good question on safe heavens uh, yen and gold as safe heaven yes yen and gold definitely uh, to some extent a dollar too actually you'd be quite surprised uh, cash but yes I mean up there uh, yen gold and one more CHF okay let's forget about the dollar for now because we are looking into more and more devaluation of the dollar okay you've got currency war at play inside behind the curtains but becoming more and more obvious every day uh, so yes so we've got yen uh, gold uh, gold and silver you can combine the two so you've got yen gold silver CHF okay these are safe heavens so uh, yes more and more uh, I mean it does actually depend though I mean we have mentioned about uh, short to medium term so the short to medium term it's looking at this but um, we are looking at more um, uh, the, the question is yes more uh, safe heaven type investment uh, we just want to know how much can go go up how much it could go up how fast okay because we've got the short to medium term kind of thing for the dollar you know the dollar the economy and all that would actually pick up quite soon too um, you know looking at the whole uh, mechanics or psychology of politics you know uh, so we will see that pick up uh, quite soon but from now until maybe December before Christmas stuff like that it was still prolonged into falling and falling uh, more rise and rise and go but then that can actually change by January onwards so uh, perhaps um, you know if you want to grab the chance of trading gold uh, grab that chance fast and quick uh, because uh, you know it will go up it is definitely going up but uh, we're not really sure of the time frame you know um, because there's a lot of gossip out there on how gold may not be affordable anymore in time to come uh, because it may have you know gone up really too far too fast upwards that make it quite uh, not affordable uh, for those especially with physical gold and bullions and uh, little nuggets and all that kind of thing in time to come so that time to come may actually be predicted to be pretty soon maybe by mid of uh, 2017 or even before 2017 ends okay so that's basically my take on that all right so that's it if we do not have ah yes we've got another question uh, how correlated is the US index to the safe haven currencies now you would need to check that Veronica and be sure uh, just to give it a bit of a read on what are the USD index made of which currency okay it has yen in it okay it has dollar in it has euro in it, it has yen in it so yen is in there now yen is the one that you have mentioned as well as part of the safe haven currencies but uh, the US index is sort of like an indicator for me okay an indicator to tell me USD's position in comparison to six other currencies but you would need to look up go on to Google and type in US index and look at the currencies that are involved there okay so if I go on to let's see uh, let's go on here okay if I go on to USD index oops let's give me a second guys let me just check that up okay um right USD oh dear it's really slow Uh, okay something is wrong here a uh, let's just sorry about that 
if you go into the USD index, you'll be able to look into uh, pairs, okay? Um, uh, it's not pairs, say currencies there. So if I just do this USD index that way, straight away, you've got it right there. Um, basket of uh, DXY is the other uh, sort of, uh, how you call that? Uh, abbreviation for the USD index okay basket of six currencies of course so there you go you've got it there now weight you need to look into the weight of it as well meaning that which currency in within that basket of six or group of six have got more weight compared to the others so we have got CHF as well in there yen as well is in there so you've got euro yen GBP CAD SEK uh, which is Swedish krona and the CHF uh, Swiss franc okay the least weight would be the CHF but the most uh, second is the yen the most is the euro so uh, compared to the euro compared to, uh, to, to, to the dollar euro may be again uh, the uh, uh, safe haven there as well but it, it is also um, a, a sort of a debt currency that method of payment for the debts and everything else so um, there's a lot of preference for the euro you know in comparison to the dollar so you will need to look into the basket of six currencies and way investors would see for themselves benefiting them on choosing which currencies out of that okay so we've got six currencies there we've got a Canadian dollar as well they're commodity currency uh, part of the commodity currency but the weight itself is not that big so uh, the first three of course we've got the pound the yen and the euro Okay, these three here, but uh, these are the uh, six currencies that comes uh, under the uh, under the US dollar index. Okay, guys, All right? Can read a little bit more, look into that, and find uh, correlations as well in there, um, and uh, look for patterns as well. And when you look for patterns, you could see the correlations too. Okay. All right. Uh, okay, I think that's it, uh, guys. Have you guys uh, got any more questions at all? Everything looks all right? I think it's been clear, if I'm not uh, wrong. Uh, let's see, we've got more question there. Okay, Veronica, that's good. Okay, guys, I think um, that's all I have for you guys uh, today. I would like to wrap up here. Um, you guys can send me a direct email with your questions uh, to kenny at orvex.com for any questions. Uh, you can also share or ask questions onto our groups, uh, mainly the uh, Telegram group. That's the most active. We've uh, sort of consolidated that all into the Telegram. So for those who have got no Telegram group as yet, feel free to uh, join in, uh, ask your account manager to get the link and uh, start communicating and sharing uh, within that group. Okay, it's quite an active group. Okay, guys, so that's it for now. And I would like to wish you guys uh, all the very best. Happy pipping. Uh, but firstly, um, lastly, but not uh, least, is uh, to, to thank you guys for attending today's webinar. Have a uh, very good evening and uh, see you guys again soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.